morning and welcome back to another daily devotion. And we're so glad that you are here with us today. We've been going through the book of Acts. Now, when you think about the book of Acts, uh, it is there as a history to explain just what the Lord has done in forming the church. So that as people in the early church and beyond would read, they would understand how the Lord was at work. And Acts is a special book because it deals with the transition. We see that in all of history, the Lord was working primarily through the Jewish nation and the, the Jewish people of God. Well, something happens in Acts where it's a transition where the gospel goes out both to Jews and to Gentiles. And this was something that was difficult for the Jewish people to really understand and, and comprehend, that for so long they were separated from the rest of the world through the food laws, through um, the prohibition of idolatry, and all of these things that were to make the Jewish people distinct and unique. Well, now the gospel is going out to the Gentiles, and they don't know really how to handle it. They know that Jesus told them to uh, go and preach the gospel in uh, Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and the outermost reaches of the world, but they really didn't comprehend that God's love was for the nations. It was for the Gentiles. And Acts records this transition of how the Lord is working and saving both Jews and Gentiles. And so we saw that last time in Acts chapter 10. Today we're in Acts chapter 11, and we see the report that Peter gives concerning how these uh, Gentile believers, they were saved, and they received the Holy Spirit, and God authenticated that their salvation was real. And so if you look at Acts chapter 11... I'm just going to read a portion for us. It says, Now the apostles <clears throat> now the apostles and the brethren who went throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. Okay, so this report goes out, hey, the Gentiles, they've received the word of God. They believed in Christ. Verse 2 says, And when Peter came up to Jerusalem, those who were circumcised took issue with him, saying, You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them? So you have these Jewish Christians, they, they were circumcised, they were Jewish, and they were also Christian, and, and they took issue with Peter, saying, why did you go with, with these uncircumcised people? Why did you go to the Gentiles? You ate and, and, and you drank with them. Well, Peter has to explain to them, uh, this is the course of events that happened. So Peter recounts to them how the Lord gave him this vision and how the sheet was lowered down with all these animals. And a voice said, get up, Peter, kill and eat. And Peter says, no, I can't. I've never eaten anything unclean or unholy. And so the voice says, what God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. Peter explains to them, this happened three times. And this is God telling me that these Jewish people... And they're not unclean anymore. If God has cleansed them, they're not, no longer unclean. They're no longer unholy. And then Peter recounts to them how he went and he preached the gospel. And you, you see in verse 15, as Peter describes what happened, he says, As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them, just as he did upon us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord and how he used to say, John baptized you with water but I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So Peter recounts to them, hey, I preached the gospel to these Gentiles. I went there because God gave me this vision saying, it's okay to go, what God has cleansed no longer consider unholy. Peter says, as I preached to them, they heard the word of God, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, and I remember what the Lord taught. He said, John baptized you with water, but I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. So Peter recounts to them, hey, the Lord has saved them just like he saved us. The Lord has given them the Holy Spirit just like he gave us the Holy Spirit. And then Peter goes on. He says, therefore, if God gave them the same gift that he gave to us after believing in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? This is a key truth. This is something that the early church needed to understand, that if God was bringing the gospel to the Gentiles, and if he was saving them and giving them the Holy Spirit, who is man to stand in God's way? This was the work of God. This is what God intended. 
This is what Jesus taught them, go into the world, preach the gospel. This is what God had to help Peter understand. And this is what these early Jewish Christians needed to understand, is that the gospel was for the Gentiles too. They didn't have to become Jewish before they could be saved. No, God was saving them and giving them the same salvation, the same blessing, the same spiritual gifts that he gave to the Jewish Christians because God was saving. And who is Peter or anyone else to stand in the way of that? And when Peter explains this, it says that they quieted down and they glorify God saying, well then, if God has granted to the Gentiles this, uh, also repentance that leads to life. You know, what they were saying is, you know, God, God granted them faith. He granted them repentance that leads to life. Like if this is God's will, then this is God's will. And they got on board with that. But it was a critical shift in their thinking. They needed to understand that, yeah, God indeed was working in the Gentiles and bringing the gospel to them. And so the rest of chapter 11 is just describing how Barnabas goes out and he preaches to the Gentiles that uh, Paul and Barnabas, they both preach. People are getting saved. Verse 26 tells us, that it was in Antioch, uh, a Gentile area, that people were first called Christians, being identified as little Christs. And Acts 11 is just the continuation of Acts 10, this critical transition where the gospel is going out not only to Jew, but to Gentile as well. And these Jewish believers were getting on board and saying, okay, this is the work of God. He's saving them just like he saved us, he's blessing them just like he blessed us. They have the same Holy Spirit that we have. And so who are we to stand in God's way? And this is just an important truth. As the church was growing and maturing, they needed to understand that the gospel was not just for the Jews, but it was for the Gentiles as well. You know, and this is uh, a heart that God has. He has a heart for the nations, and uh, and he has called us as believers to proclaim the gospel, uh, Lord, to, to those around us, but also to those all over the world. And so let's pray for missions, local missions. Let's pray for our worldwide missions. Let's pray and take opportunities to evangelize personally and, and to minister the gospel to those that we interact with. So let's, let's do our part to fulfill God's love that he has for the nations, that we would proclaim the gospel so that they too would come to understand the hope of eternal life in Christ Jesus. So I hope you're encouraged today. Looking forward to seeing you next time. God bless.